Welcome to Worship at Bethesda. Today, on and off the Emmaus Road. Come, now is the time to worship. We're glad you're here. shared journey that is God the Trinity you send us the Spirit to encourage us to accompany us and so Creator Redeemer Sustainer as we worship you this morning quiet our hearts balance our spirits and bring us into your presence and send us out to serve in love Turning to our acknowledgement of Indigenous lands. The Thessalonian United Church affirms that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe, is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, and is within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. We are thankful for the enduring presence of Indigenous peoples on this land. Turning to being Bethesda this morning, a few items uh, to underline uh, with a uh, ongoing newish month of April. Uh, coffee host it, hosts and hostesses are ongoingly welcome. Uh, and uh, next Sunday begins uh, a study leave time and uh, please do share in the uh, content. Uh, basically, the theme is ongoing Emmaus Road, finding God in new places. So worship next Sunday in our still ongoing collaborative ministry will be at Ryerson at 10 a.m. A thanks goes to, uh, to Cheryl uh, for accompanying Marshall and Ryerson to 
a, a field trip to Harcourt uh, United Church, and I'm sure we'll be hearing more about the findings from that journey yesterday. As we continue to worship our God together, we turn now to our opening hymn, our Easter hymn of resurrection, hope, and joy. Thine is the glory. Please stand and sing if you're comfortable doing so. Our Christ candle for Easter is lit. The light continues to shine in all darkness, and no darkness can overcome it. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Creating God who calls us to worship in a journey of faith. Your journey with us continues by not only creating us, by encountering us, dialoguing with us, speaking with us now, in life, and now through our scripture reading. Amen. <coughs> our scripture reading this morning is an Easter narrative, Luke chapter 24, and verses 13 to 36. The walk to Emmaus. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing. And he said to them, 
What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They sit still, looking at Sal. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who know, does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision. Then he said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should, should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This ends the scripture reading of the road to Emmaus. Thanks be to God. And now may the words of my mouth and the lesson that is taught to our children bear fruit in your sight. O Lord our God, we pray. Amen. Now as we share our hymn of preparation, our children may go to our Sunday school and we prepare for our scripture reflection. As we walked on. Please stand and sing if you're comfortable doing so.
mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts. Barefoot in your sight, O oh Lord our God, we pray. Amen. So we have come this morning to Easter 2, reminding ourselves again that Easter is not a day, but a season in our liturgical calendar, giving us an extended length of time to focus more directly on the resurrection and those appearances that feed our journey of faith. You may know that the change from uh, worship on Saturday as the Jewish Sabbath to Sunday was in fact in recognition of the all-consuming importance and guidance and of life of the resurrection. And so each Sunday is in fact an Easter Sunday. Well, in our journey we have been uh, guided and has, have had as a filter some stained glass windows from Ryerson. And today here at Bethesda and previously at Ryerson, the filter is our Bethesda window. Many of you, maybe all of you, maybe not all who are watching on YouTube may know, know the story of how our window came to be here. It was originally in the former chapel at the detention center where I was the chaplain. And then when they were moving the chapel, the superintendent said, the window is not going to the new chapel. It is obviously a window of Christian significance, which is fine, but your new chapel will bear more of a multi-faith nature. So, to make a long story short, he offered me the window brought it and our Oak Hill Academy friends raised it to the ceiling and so now it forms in our apps a key signaling of our life together in worship being a resurrected life being a life blessed and made whole by the cross and a life in the spirit with the encircling dove The window inscription says, and he was known by them in the breaking of bread. At various points along our uh, storytelling journey from Lent to Easter, we've stopped to see a depiction, a video record of the historic place on which the scripture is based, at least said to be, to be based. Whether those historical pay places are 100% accurate is up for question, but nevertheless, many people have said they have appreciated that nod to location and geography and how that feeds the faith impacting reality of the story that we're listening to. And so today's story of the Maus Road and the breaking of the bread and the place where it is said to have occurred. What's up everyone? Today we're at a first century tomb just outside of Jerusalem where Jesus preached, died, and was buried in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. But today we're going to be focusing in on the appearance of Jesus just after his resurrection. Christian tradition identifies this ancient basilica as the place where Jesus revealed himself to the two disciples when he broke bread with them. Here, the resurrected Jesus explained to them from Moses and all the prophets what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Now, we often think of the significance of the cross where Jesus shed his blood and died for our sins. But what is just as significant is Jesus' resurrection. Yes, Jesus died on the cross for our sins, but without the resurrection, our faith is futile. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 16 through 17, For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. The story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus 
is important for many reasons. It provides an emphasis on the Old Testament prophecies related to Jesus, evidence regarding the additional appearance of Jesus after his resurrection, and the connection regarding the many eyewitnesses of the resurrected Jesus. Luke 24 is often seen as a model of the journey that Jesus makes with many of us today as he opens our eyes, points us to the Word, and reveals himself along life's walk as the risen and resurrected Lord and Savior. Well, thank you for that. Staying with those two disciples. But harking back, in our, perhaps in our biblical memory, another time, and another journey, and another somewhat mysterious appearance. I direct our attention to our response, our call and response quilt. Harking to the story of Jacob's journey, fleeing, and then the call of an angel, and Jacob, having seen as an angel, descending and ascending, and so a previous inclination of God speaking in surprising ways end of a messenger calling to Jacob and now to these two disciples. An interesting side note, these disciples are painted in various ways. You saw here that Cleopas is mentioned as one of the disciples on this road, and you can go through all kinds of clip art and Sunday school material. Sometimes you'll see the two disciples are Cleopas and another follower because neither Cleopas or this unnamed follower were named as one of the twelve. Sometimes <coughs> the other disciple is male, sometimes female. Some scholars think that this was likely Cleopas' wife who was on this journey. In any case, in the history of God encountering those who are on a journey with Jacob, that journey on the Emmaus Road comes to us today. And that calls us to consider journeys as a whole. <coughs> We're all on a journey of one kind or another, but we don't always recognize it. We don't always name it. I have not been on a cruise, but those who have been often say that you'd never know that you were on a huge ocean liner crossing the sea. There was no turbulence at all. Well, perhaps some of our journeys are like that. Seemingly, there is no turbulence. Seemingly, we don't even know we're on a journey. A colleague of mine shared with me her story of challenging a congregation, her congregation, to say, what is it that you suffer for or sacrifice on account of your faith? <coughs> the colleague tells me that a woman came up to her afterwards and said, I don't know that I suffer or sacrifice much on account of my faith, but I certainly do suffer a lot because of the medical conditions that are on me. Well, she was honest, and it prompted my colleague to say to this parishioner to consider what kind of journey of faith that poor woman was on. There are other kinds of journeys. Perhaps we are amongst those, or <coughs> know those who were once avid travelers and are now staying at home. We see calls for this or that journey. People, Some people are not able to go on them, but that's still the same. Those people are nevertheless on a journey. 
Then there are the journeys that some of our millennials speak to, of being stuck in one dead-end job or another, or are on a journey of seemingly epidemics of mental health illness. What are those journeys of faith? And so today we are called to Emmaus Road, both on and off that road. And the question comes to us individually and collectively, what kind of a journey are we on? Are we on? What direction are we going in individually and collectively? The overall trajectory of Scripture would ask us, are we moving in the direction of liberation from destructive habits and debilitating anxiety towards peace, life, and joy? I recall, <coughs> and this was a shared journey here at Bethesda, where Bethesda, perhaps with a degree of risk, took me on as a Presbyterian, as your minister, and so I entered into the United Church, and in doing so, uh, took the required courses in, uh, in United Church uh, doctrine and policy and history. And I recall in that United Church history session, the instructor saying, and spelling out the United Church's three branches of uh, DNA, Methodist, Presbyterian, and Congregationalist, and uh, he shared that in the Methodist Church, those seeking ordination, the question came to them, drawing from John Wesley, in the Wesleyan heritage, the question that came to those seeking ordination was, are you going on in perfection? Well, our United Church history professor did a deep dive into the history and came across the story of many candidates' response to are you going on to perfection, refraining from themselves, from blurting out and saying, not at the rate I'm going right now. Well, perhaps we can be sympathetic to that ordination candidate. If we were to be asked, are we going on in perfection? Maybe we sometimes feel not at the rate we're going right now. Well, to these two, two disciples, they certainly had a ways to go. At that time, at the start of their journey in this scripture, they retained conventional hopes, conventional hopes for a Messiah who would liberate their people from subjection to imperial rule, leaving no room for a Messiah who would suffer and die on a cross, and not much room for Jesus in his teaching ministry, describing his journey as leading to a cross, perhaps with some, some surprising terms in including centurions and young children, and a new sense of the creativeness and the place of women in Jesus' kingdom. Well, on this conventional journey, they are joined by a traveling companion. And this companion places their sad journey in a new frame. This companion paints out a Messiah, mapped out in Scripture, the witness of Scripture of a Messiah suffering on behalf of the people, freedom from bondage and victory over anything. Poses God's healing work in the world. For Luke, the resurrection is a sign to see, requiring the opening of one's eyes to see it properly. 
It is said that perhaps Mary mistook Jesus for the gardener, and these two disciples on the road to Emmaus had not yet had their eyes opened. The astounding tale of those women who witnessed the resurrection was not enough to allow these journeying people to see Jesus. But they journeyed on. Recognition seemed to be dawning, at least to the point where the stranger was going on. The scripture makes it clear and points out they practically begged him to stay, and so he did. And they went on. Jesus explained the scripture, still without drawing the tie that closely between the suffering Messiah and himself, and then sharing in breaking of the bread and our window declares that then he was known in the breaking of the bread. And so the invitation comes to us this morning. Where will Jesus be known in our lives? I was leading a celebration of life yesterday, <coughs> and the person whose life was being celebrated, Orville Berlinette, around the room there was uh, installations of pictures describing uh, Orville as a principal, a teacher, a father, a grandfather, an uncle, a brother, a gardener, a cottager, and Around those subscriptions were photographs where in clearly for those present the resurrection of hope, the hope and the promise of Orville being in that resurrection was seen in all of those things. The invitation from this Emmaus Road scripture is yes to revisit and to know our core uh, foundation of Christ as healing Messiah, as entering into brokenness as our Easter hymn declares, uh, being buried and then the green blade rises, taking that perhaps a broader, in a legitimate way, of looking for and seeing resurrections and life all around and about us. I was reminded last week of this particular sign at a cafe in Westdale, and the sign says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Well, in the uh, bus ride to uh, Harcourt Church, at the end of that journey was a, uh, a explanation of Harcourt's journey of being a communal hub. We are on that road, we have a ways to go, but the hope for destination is indeed this same idea this same principle declared in the sign, yes, we are individuals, but like our God, who is Trinity, and who is collect a collective and is in relation, calls us to seek signs of resurrection collectively as Bethesda, as a communal hub, with our partners, and then rippling out to all things that places like Wesley bring, to all hope to places like the Living Rock brings, to all signs of care and inclusion and uh, attention to seniors in loneliness that Ancaster Community Services may be bringing. All of those are again resurrection appearances the stranger 
making himself known on our Emmaus road. Well, I again reference uh, last Sunday, as we were preparing for an AGM, we simply revisited Jesus' call to be fishers of people. And it was pointed out, I had never heard of this before, that there is a preacher called a fisher. Apparently, this one said preacher had appeared at someone's cottage, and in conversation after, it comes out that these uh, fishers are very uh, strong creatures and often violent, and the contrast is certainly there between that kind of being a fisher and the fishers of people that we are called to be. Our Emmaus Road, being fishers of people individually and collectively. This week, as is always the case, or almost always, <coughs> I turned to a collection of Bethesda stories uh, assembled together uh, by Marie as other collections are downstairs, and I came across this story, this story of a bit of an Emmaus Road experience, of someone being the presence of Jesus and inviting them into faith to someone else. Ken Brent, 1995. The kids went to Bethesda One Room School where Mary Lowry was principal and teacher. One time, Bruce Somerville took them over to Bethesda Church. And from then on, Bethesda has been part of our lives. And from then, numerous Sundays of lifting up resurrected Christ and Bruce being that stranger on the road inviting Ken into deeper faith. Well I conclude this morning on this other fishing story. It's a poem by Anne Lewin called Disclosure and here is how it goes. Prayer and faith is like watching for the kingfisher. All you can do is be where he is likely to appear and wait. Often, nothing much happens. There is space, silence, and expectancy. No visible sign. Only the knowledge that he's been there and may come again. Seeing or not seeing cease to matter. You have been prepared. But sometimes, when you've almost stopped exciting it, expecting it, there the kingfisher is. Almost, when you stop expecting it, there Jesus is, breaking bread and bringing life. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for uh, retaining in the scriptures the story of the encounter of two disciples with the risen Christ on the road. We would pause and thank you and again remember you as our creating God calling us into relationship with you, with the earth, and with others. We thank you for the gift of Christ into our life, into our brokenness, and now into ongoing resurrection. We thank you for the flowing gift of the Spirit coming to us, and may that Spirit draw us into seeing Christ in strangers, in friends, in relationships, in times difficult and joyous. 
We hold before you now, into the resurrection, those known to us, struggling to see love, hope, and joy in their lives. We name them now in the sacredness of our hearts and memories and connections. Lord God, be the revealed stranger and resurrected Christ on the road to those we have named and to all in Bethesda and beyond, experiencing struggles of health and wellness of body, mind, and spirit. May we all know your resurrected presence and signs of hope life and may we be love bearers one and all Lord God today we remember also Linville United Church in Wyndham Center in our Horseshoe Falls regional prayer cycle ask that you accompany them in their journey and as we do so we continue to pray in the prayer that our Savior gave to us saying our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. The offertory.
sharing in our Easter Sunday prayer. Pray together. God of grace and glory, by the death and resurrection of your beloved child, your reign of wholeness has been unleashed within our bent and broken world. Open us to your empowering grace that we may be bearers of your world-redeeming love through the resurrected Christ, our dignity, our power, and our peace. Amen. And now may the accompanying journeying grace of Christ, the ever-present and persuasive love of God, and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Thank you.